Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. Sean from Tested. We're doing another laser cut project today. And mm. Sean, uh, well, this is a finished project that's Looks gonna be cool. the basis of the project we're doing. It's a globe. Yeah. It looks a little weird. Yeah, you actually uh, <laughs> brought my attention to this. Yeah. It was a project courtesy of Make Magazine's Gavin Smith, who did a blog post in July about how he designed a Damaxian globe. It's really cool. Yeah, super neat. This is, of course, a 20-sided globe, and it's put together with a bunch of triangles. The triangle is basically cut out and look like this. Uh -huh. But he also uh, designed vertices. Um, that, that work, yeah. so you can actually connect them together. Which is very nice. Yeah, so the vertices are just 3D printed, they're like this, mm -hmm. and it can, you can actually have vertices for a 20-sided object, for a 12-sided object, it's just a little different. Mm -hmm. And this Damaxian globe was an image you found on Wikipedia, which you then vectorized, and so you could actually make it into a yeah, an I etched loved, globe. Yeah, I love that it was an existing thing, and he just, he, I mean, it's still a lot of work, but it's really cool that you can take something like that and then repurpose it, so. Yeah. So what I wanted to do today was take this project to the next step. And, oh, and yes. one, make it bigger. Yes. And so I was wondering, could we just double the size of everything? <laughs> That's a very interesting question. Are you thinking like uh, like like traditional globe size, like yeah, roughly somewhere exactly. around there? Yeah, exactly. Right. It well, that's the 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 glory of digital is that in a lot of cases, yes, you can. Now, uh, in the case of these, uh, thickness doesn't matter mm -hmm. too much because it's uh, it's all laser cut. So. Literally, I'd be going in and, and just enlarging it by 200%. Right. And it should make no difference to the laser cutter as long as we're using the same thickness of material or we tell it what thickness, it shouldn't be a problem. Right. And so we would double size the laser cut pieces. They would be four times the area. Mm -hmm. um, and the holes would be twice as big. So these yeah. are M3. So step up the screw size. Step up the M screws. M6 should work fine. And could we just double the size of the 3D print. <clears throat> I don't see why not because it, they would, it would be the same in relation to the panels and if we're just getting the right size screws that should all scale up fairly well. Yeah, yeah. I think that'd be an interesting experiment and I think it'd be really cool to have a globe almost basketball size yeah, absolutely. with this really intricate design. And are you thinking what material you want to use to wood again? Or Yeah, yep. I think wood is great and the first test project we did, uh, this one's just walnut, mm -hmm. uh, nice finish. Um, and it has a nice finish because the sheet of walnut I was using had a nice coat onto it. Yeah. Now because we don't have, if we want to make it bigger, we need more material and we don't have a material that's coated. So I want to do it on a lighter color. Okay. I want to do it on that something might like make this birch. That actually might make these show up better. So exactly, that'd be, that'd exactly. Be yeah. My don't want scorching. So yeah. what can we do to minimize <clears throat> scorching? We've had really good uh, success with the presets on the Universal, so that's great. But I finally, finally have upgraded our arsenal. So I got this. Whoa. Yeah. So as we've talked, oh, I already suction cut the two. <laughs> uh, as we've talked about before, uh, you get scorching when you cut stuff and it's a good idea to have a protective layer. A lot of stuff like acrylic already come with uh, masking on it that will help with the scorching. You peel it off when done. But a lot of wood and other materials aren't gonna have that, so you wanna put something on it. Now, you could do like, masking tape, paper, you know, painter's tape or whatever, but that's like for something this big, it's like <laughs> And a lot of the times that the, the adhesive is a little too aggressive, right. especially after you melt it in a laser and it kind of really sticks. So uh, we have transfer paper, hmm. which is, uh, or transfer tape, which is typically used in like sign making and stuff. Okay. So if you feel, it's, it's a much lower tack than like uh, masking tape. It's also heavier than masking tape. So it's a little more durable. Hmm. And we got a nice wide sheet so we won't have to use as many yeah. on this. So we can put some of this down and it should work. Let's well. try right now. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's grab see which sheet. is our good side here. I think this is our good side, right? Right there? Yeah. Actually, is that the case? Which, you know what, whatever, whatever side you like is the good side. Let's make a decision right now. I actually like the finish on this side. A I'm little bit of a gloss. Sure, yes. I'm not sure if we should go this way or this way. That's a good question. Uh, let's do Let's do this. Let's right. go wide. Oh yeah. Wow. I may, I may not have made that big enough. <laughs> Almost perfect, actually. Uh, I was eyeballing it, yeah. So, yeah. So this should uh, help with us with the scorching. And it's thin enough that for our laser cutter settings, we don't need to, we can still use no, calipers. It should, it should go and right measure, through measure that, this. yeah. 
and it should peel off relatively easy. Another thing I want to test for this project is notice that this sheet of wood has a little bit of warping. It's not yeah, perfectly that's flat. that's the problem. So maybe we could put some weights on the side. Yep. I, I got that as well. Uh, some weights to, to kind of get out the warp. Awesome. I think that's probably enough area for what we need to do. If yeah. not, we can go back and tape that up. No, but totally. I just fold this under. Yeah. So this is an easy on, easy off stuff. It'll help with the scorching and uh, I'll see how it works. All right, next step is to go to Illustrator and take the original DXF design that Gavin Smith had mm -hmm. and scale it up for that our blazer should be bag. easy enough. Okay, Sean, so I did a bunch of the laser cutting. I wanna walk you through uh, what I did. So this was the one we originally had, mm -hmm. and um, to be honest, this one was actually cut with the Glowforge. Yeah. Uh, with the did. material they provided, it looked great. Yeah. Really easy to import um, that DXF file mm -hmm. um, from Make Magazine. Um, so I took the same file and I cut it using material that we had some uh, laying around. Yes, yeah, laying around yeah. on the universal laser. And I did this using um, the contact paper. Yeah, the transfer paper, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, now, the universal laser has, I went through Illustrator, and because it goes through the printer software, there's a little bit of, of finessing that needs to happen. Right. Yeah, we're not Illustrator experts. No, not at all. I think we're suffering from that a little. <laughs> yeah, so there are like little so, tweaks in here that we need to do. And so you you ran into some issues with uh, export, uh, printing it out uh, from Illustrator that it wasn't coming through correctly, right? Exactly, like for example, some of the cut lines, which to me look right, they were supposed to be 0 .001 the thickness, right. the red color, just weren't registering and said so to redo some of the, the cut holes here. It would be maddening figuring out why. I know, it's like trial and error. But <laughs> yeah. eventually got it solved. It looks almost exactly the same. It looks pretty yeah. good. Actually, I love the finish of this one, but I like how well you can see the everything contrast. on this one. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And up close, so this one did have the contact paper. It's very, very minimal scorching. Those presets, setting it to just that hardwood preset, mm -hmm. work well. And it does use all three of the types of cutting we can do with that laser cutter. So you got vector cutting, mm -hmm. which is just literally just cutting through the wood. Yep. And then uh, the raster uh, etching or engraving. Yep. Yeah. And then, but you use a different one for the longitude and latitude lines, yes. right? Yes, that yeah. was the uh, vector engrave. Yeah, which, vector, um, vector etch. Vector think, yeah. etch, mm -hmm. uh, which is much faster. It, you know, when you're doing a, a raster engrave, yeah. it is like a dot matrix printer yeah. moving, and on some laser cutters, it's gonna be maybe a little slower, some, like on the universal, pretty mm -hmm. fast, but you're still watching it go line by line. Yeah. Uh, with the vector engrave, which I did for these longitudinal lines, uh, they look perfect. Yeah, and they go really fast. Real fast. Yeah. So why would you do that? And that, that's a good question. So the, the I kind of, uh, correlate them to like the raster etching is kind of like using a big fat marker to do it mm -hmm. and it's it's quick for if you need to cut a grave a lot it is the fastest option yeah. the laser the vector etching um, will literally it's like more like doing it with a fine tip and it yeah. will if it has a large area that it has to do it'll be like and it'll take forever. And, and that vector etching needs to, the way it worked best was when the line thickness was that 0 .001 yeah. as well. So it was drawing those lines. Now, I, I could have used vector etching for uh, this outline as well, but it, I, I tried the, the engraving, it worked fine, and I actually had the engraving for the larger pieces. Yeah. So that's what these are. So. <laughs> I can't wait to see this. These so are the 20 these panels. Are, uh, how big, how much bigger? It's twice the size, nice. so four times the area, the dimensionally just 2x, and it was almost perfect that when I did the 2x, yeah. the 18 inches 
it was like it was nine inches before mm -hmm. height wise, and it was eighteen inches, which per fit perfectly into the laser cutter. And we did this on the universal. On the yeah. universal uh, with two sheets, so it did have to do a little bit of masking to not cut off, um, to to not be able oh. to all do it all in one because the thirty right. we didn't have material that was uh, that was wide enough right. for this full design. Uh, but you can see the contact paper is still here, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you can actually see on the white contact paper, the that's scorching. the scorching. Yep. This is everything that you otherwise would be having on, on, on yeah. the material. Now, something I did notice is that the tackiness of the contact paper, there are pros and cons. Yes. Like, for example, it's just tacky enough that it's, it sticks there, but it's really easy to peel off. Yeah. It's easier to peel off than I think a lot of pre coated Which is good and bad. Good and bad. Now, I think I went with the Amazon special. I just got like the cheapest roll I had. I suspect that uh, it would be worthwhile to spend a few extra dollars to get a little bit higher quality. And mm -hmm. uh, I think the official name is it's transfer paper, which is used for vi uh, when you get like a vinyl decal. Mm -hmm. That's what it's on, so you can easily transfer it onto your surface. So uh, yeah. So and. I think you had a, so you did have a, a few places where it started to peel off before it got to Mid that part. Mid-cut, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which, two uh, things happen that way, right? So, because there was some fine um, etching work here and, and vector uh, etching here, uh, as it's doing those passes, uh -huh. if the tackiness isn't all the way through, <laughs> it will kind of float. And so on that sheet specifically, you can tell there this are is, parts that- This is great comparison though. Yes, uh, so right. So this is showing what it gets. Yeah, so this is without scorching. Yeah. And that's when it is scorching. And it even is such that when that contact paper starts flooding around, it yeah. can get in the way of some <laughs> of the laser etching. And I think there's they like- got laser blocked. Yeah, exactly. There's a piece or two here where, like right here, you can tell there was paper that fluttered above as oh, it was yeah. doing etching, so it didn't even complete <laughs> hey, the line. Hey, this is uh, all trial and error. Exactly. But I love, this is a great look with comparison between like no paper and the, and the tape. Yeah. Um, and I, like I said, I think a little bit better quality. And the other thing, but this is something that I always have to go over when we are labeling stuff at NYU, burnishing. So when you put sticky stuff down, like a like on a, a label on a case or anything, you gotta like like I will usually take like a paper towel or a cloth and just rub the whole thing down. Mm. A lot of people are just like, there it's done, <laughs> and that's not good enough. So yeah, you know, yeah. so that can help a little bit with this stuff too. So yeah, yeah. Uh, but these pieces, I think, look great. It's gonna be a little oh, bit of very work satisfying to, to peel off the covering. I did print out these vertices, twenty of these, just also twice right, they the look size. Great. Um, so the next step is to get the hardware and do assembly, and then at the end of that, we should have a globe dun, dun, dun. twice the size of that one. Yeah.